The summer season is in full swing, and with those hot, humid days we've had, it sounds pretty nice maybe to sit on your deck and have a cold one or maybe a vodka soda. But if you have IBS symptoms, is drinking alcohol really something that's going to help keep your symptoms away? My name is Marcy Vasky, and I'm a functional medicine nutritionist specializing in gut health and also someone who suffers with IBS. So I've had the effects of drinking alcohol and definitely not keeping my symptoms away. So not only am I a gut health expert, but I see a lot of clients with constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, and if it sounds like you or maybe a family member or someone you love and know, then I will link our website down below where you can easily make an initial appointment. And if you're the kind of person who likes to do things on their own, I'm also going to link our free guide, which is five ways to improve your gut health. That way you can get a start on getting better gut health and changing your life. Now we know that alcohol does irritate the GI tract and causing diarrhea or bloating or abdominal pain for even people who don't have gut issues or IBS. So for those of you who do have IBS, alcohol may not be your best friend. The reality is, is that alcohol disrupts our microbiome. Our microbiome is made up of trillions of bacteria that help support our immune system and help support neurotransmitter production that send messages to our brain via the vagus nerve. Now, it's just like if you would pour alcohol onto a wound to kill all the bacteria, drinking alcohol does the same thing to your gut. Now, on top of alcohol, killing our bacteria and our gut microbiome, research suggests that symptoms worsen after a period of drinking. So symptoms like the bloating, the diarrhea, maybe extra gas, or just plain old abdominal pain. Now, outside of killing our good bacteria and our microbiome, what else is alcohol really doing to our digestive system? Now, alcohol affects our digestive system in many ways. It has the possibility and has been shown in research to damage our digestive organs and even the tissue and the lining of all of our organs. And that's simply even not only heavy alcohol use, but even moderate alcohol use. Now, damage to our, the lining of the tissues in our digestive system can lead to leaky gut as well. And so having IBS on the, and having leaky gut now you're really getting your digestive system into a pickle and likely will have many more symptoms. Alcohol can even weaken our esophageal sphincter, which brings us or gives us the symptoms of acid reflux. And not only that, but alcohol can diminish our hydrochloric acid in our stomach, leading to more heartburn and indigestion. The when we drink alcohol, it reduces that hydrochloric acid, causing slower gastric emptying. So you have a drink or two, and then you eat, and you kind of feel like, oh, I have some indigestion or reflux. And this is why, is because the alcohol is really causing your digestive system to slow down, creating a lot of symptoms. Now, if you struggle with more gas and bloating, what is happening is that there is malabsorption going on in your small intestine. So the alcohol actually decreases the absorption rate in your small intestine where we do a lot of that metabolism of our food and especially carbohydrates. The carbohydrates will not be digested properly and interact with the bacteria in our large intestine, creating more gas and bloating. So you can see that by having even a drink or two every day will slowly harm your digestive system. And even if you're one that doesn't have gut issues now, if you're constantly consuming alcohol on a regular basis, this might be something you end up with in years to come. And even in the interim, if that's, you know, if the IBS doesn't show up for you, you're still having effects from that. 
And maybe some of you have noticed that after you have a couple cocktails, you get a little bit more reflux, or you feel like food's not digesting, or you do get more bloated and gassy. If that's the case, then I want you to really think about, do I need the drink or not? And use it, you know, be wise about it. And if you are someone who struggles with IBS, I'm sure you're working every day to limit your symptoms by get, trying to get enough sleep, eating the foods that don't bother you. And if you tend to end up having a drink at the end of the day, or maybe it's just a few times a week, you're really stalling that process of letting your gut heal and getting to a place where you know, your digestive system works efficiently and effectively. There was actually a study completed in 2013 where it took 166 women between the ages of 18 to 48 compared to 48 women with no IBS. So the 166 had IBS, the 48 did not. And what they were trying to find out is if after a night of drinking and into the next day, were there more symptoms in the IBS individuals versus the non-IBS individuals? And I'm pretty sure you can guess what I'm gonna say is that yes, for women that had IBS and had a night of drinking, the next day their symptoms were much more elevated with more bloating and more diarrhea and just abdominal cramping. Now, of course, we can address, you know, what, what kind of alcohol is even going to be better on IBS. And I get this question a lot from clients, you know, if they're going to drink, what should they be even having? And while I just explained above that alcohol does us no favors whatsoever for our digestive system and obviously for the rest of our body, but if there's occasions where you're going to have a cocktail, how, what, what's going to be better? And so things that are alcohol that tends to do better for people with IBS would be sticking to clear alcohol. So things like vodka or gin or tequila, and then mix them with non-carbonated beverages or, and definitely no juices. Worst things will be, you know, the dark liquors or beer, carbonated beverages, seltzers, things like that. Because of course those are going to induce a lot more bloating and gas. And so if you're going to choose to have a cocktail every now and again, or just on special occasions, and you do have IBS, stick to the clear things, make sure you have a drink, drink some water, and, and just be mindful about it. Because really the answer to our question today of can I drink alcohol with IBS really comes down to a personal decision. As I mentioned and talked about, we are gonna have symptoms if we have alcohol and we have IBS. But sometimes, like I mentioned too, if it's a special occasion, you know what you're getting into and you're like, okay, well, I can deal with the symptom for a day, then you know, that's your choice. But I think in the long term, you know, if you're really trying to heal the gut and trying to get to a better place with it, really eliminating alcohol from your diet, from your daily life, week, month, year, is definitely gonna be your best bet. And so I hope this helped you kind of come to a decision on what you wanna do about your own gut health if you are struggling. And of course, if you are, you know, we're happy to help you at Oswald Digestive Clinic. Easy to make an initial appointment um, on the website that I've linked below. And we can help you get to better gut health leading your best life.